So I have finished a project, or it's pretty close to finished. And my process is when I finish working on a project, I convert that uh, or I save that uh, project as a template and I remove the uh, model so I have a clean template. And the advantage there is that there are many uh, setups, filters and such that I want to uh, use over and over and over again. And I don't need to go through the, through the process then of, oops, of uh, of, of making those filters and uh, certainly the stacked wall. There's a lot of advantage to me, I think, for the stacked walls uh, to be made. And every time I, it, it seems like every project that I work on here needs a special stacked wall. And so what I'm gonna do now is, is um, save this as its uh, project. And then I'm gonna save it as a template and then clean it up a little bit. And then we have a, then I have a new template to use for my next project. So file, save as, template and I'll put that in my job folders um, and I'll give it a, a name of uh, it's uh, today is March 12th so I'm going to use that for my next project <clears throat> And what I'm going to do then is remove the house uh, from the template, but I'll have all of my sheets and I'll have all of my filters and I'll have all of my stacked walls. So now I have all my general notes. And the first thing I'll do in my template now is I'll change the name. I'll just put a period here. And that is sort of a placeholder. And I will use this template for my next project. This works fine for there. And then I have uh, all kinds of tabs open. So I'll just close everything. And then let's go to a 3D view. So let's come over here to Oh, I'm looking for a 3D view somewhere here. Let's see, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna go all the way to the top here. And I have my browser organization. Oops. I just wanna I'll collapse everything. So I have my browser organization that's already made. So my template is a very valuable tool for starting. It saves a lot of time, uh, but Every project I work on, I add something to that model, which then I will use for the next template will come from the next project when I'm completed with that. So uh, well, I guess I can open this up and I want to go to a 3D presentation. And basically what I want to do now is take the house away. So it'll leave everything else. I just put a window around everything here, except for my crop region, which will leave that. So just like with AutoCAD, a window, uh, a, a selecting window will only select the objects that are within 100% inside of that window. So uh, my crossing or my um, uh, crop region, uh oh, might have a problem here. Let's see what happens. I try to delete that. Because of the pins, I have pinned objects here. Maybe I'll have to unpin everything first. Let's see what happens. Looks like it went away. Okay. 
So now let's just double check. We'll go to a site plan. Let's see what we have here on my site plan. I just have the site. Um, don't really need this information. So that's a particular site. And all right. Now over here, you're seeing all of my stacked walls. So let's just go through a couple of floor plans to make sure everything's gone. Eh, look at that. Didn't get rid of that. That's a slab in the garage. That's a raised concrete platform in the garage. So delete that. I keep the, oh, I have some rooms here too. So I keep two sections. I have one that's called SS, which is side to side, and one that's uh, front to back. And I use that. Uh, individual sections to create my model. And as I'm working on it, I'll move those sections wherever I want them to be. And uh, I do already have, oh, that's a floor drain here. Well, let's get rid of that guy. And uh, I do already have all my sections created, uh, but I'm not, I don't use them because they just, to me, they just get in the way. And they're confusing. Uh, so I set one section over here, I set one section over here, and then I'm working in the middle here. These are on another sheet or another screen. Uh, I have a Microsoft Surface Pro 7, works fine for this. Um, it works fine for um, the complexity of the models that I do, which are, I'm a residential architect. So that's fine. So I might leave that note there, that's okay. Just go through real quickly to see what's here. I don't need the square footage, but I don't need to delete it either because um, I'm going to put the square footage note on my next project. So I'll leave that there. These are reference planes. I don't really need them either. So I can clean that up a little bit. I'll show you my stacked walls in a moment here. Select all instances, won't let me do that. All right, so I do use a lot of reference planes. Find them to be an incredibly helpful tool. So let's keep going through. Just to spend a few minutes cleaning things up here. And I'll move those sections around. And what happens is that the, I'll see the sections on the sides here. This is a uh, Scepter SCEPTRE uh, ultra wide screen. And I find that to be incredibly, uh, oops, whatever that was, I don't want to do that. I find it to be incredible, whoops, again, helpful. The screen, the, the ultra wide screen works really well uh, for Revit, the way that it's laid out. Okay, so let's spend a couple minutes on this. I want to keep uh, it, and the rooms are still here, so that's why it's listed. But I'll keep that, and it'll populate with my new project. And I don't mind keeping the square footages either. So let's see what we have here for my dimension plan. So, hmm. I really would be best to just take this stuff out completely uh, because it really is just as easy to add this stuff back in later. And I think I'm just doing it, going to do that. Oh, good. I'll get rid of my rooms too. Let's go back to that. Now, we're not going to see any rooms here on the first floor now. But as I populate my next project, uh, it will be, and this is crop region. All right, so maybe doing a little bit more detail here than is necessary uh, to show, but that's a break line and I had in there, I can take that out. All right, so let's go to the 
a stacked walls real quick here. Oops. So, this is my electrical lines. Select all instances. I see it's not letting me do that again, too. So, do it this way. I'd like to keep my, and I make my sections red. That's a cue for me. All right, so now we'll go over and take a look at the stacked walls. So in my sections, I have a section called stacked walls. Those I want to keep. When we go to the stacked walls, you can see that as I make a new stacked wall that has sort of any sort of a requirement, a special requirement, then I'll just make another one and I add it to the side over there. If you look at the plan view, you'll see that it's that when I do my schedules, it does count this material. So I try to make these only a couple feet wide. So Revit is counting all of this in its schedule when it does my material takeoffs, but it's, it's going to be close uh, because these are very small widths of a project. But anyway, I have all my stack walls here. So I just go in and I say, okay, here's what, here's the one that I want. And I will go back to, say, the first floor plan. Uh, let's move this over just to give a better view. All right, so there it is. Back to the stacked wall. So let's say I pick this wall. This is the one I want to use in my project. Uh, where did that go? Yeah, so here it is. So now I'll just copy it. It's already got the right height and everything. I'll just copy it over here to wherever I want it to be in the project. And then make it as wide or as, as narrow and as correctly located as I want it to be. I still have it over there. Here, I just copied it. So the stacked wall works really well. Now also, as I said, I'm a residential architect and this is pretty much the components that I use, cabinets, uh, washer and dryer, stove, range top or the vent, refrigerator. I made a special cabinet with a microwave and two ovens in it. Then I have my bathroom uh, uh, vanity with the sink and a mirror in there, uh, toilet. So all of these things are already in, loaded into the project. And all I need to do then is simply drag it over and put it in place. So um, the template works really well for me. Uh, of course, you know, I might have to change my levels, but I change my levels once. And, and uh, then I might have to modify my stack walls to satisfy the new requirements. But, um, this is pretty much the traditional uh, uh, height that I have in a in a standard house. A custom house would have its own own levels. So uh, that's it. When I go to my uh, sheets, I have all my sheets made. Now the sheets will have some renderings on them, so I'll have to delete those too because uh, that's from the previous house. Uh, so that'll go. And then it becomes my template for my next project. And you can see if I forget something, if I leave one of these renderings here, uh, it's not a big deal. I'll get rid of it uh, when I'm working on the next project. And that's uh, pretty much the benefit of uh, templates and, and how to make that. So now my template is customized for the next project. Uh, if I'm working on several projects at the same time, then it becomes a little bit different. You have to uh, decide which one I want to save as my template because each project has its own customization to it for whatever reason. And I think I'm just about ready to start. In fact, I am going to stop. This is my template. Uh, these are all of my, my sheets are already made. And uh, actually, my plans are loaded into the sheet already. So I don't even have to drag them over. Uh, I don't think. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. If we go to the uh, first floor plan. Now let's go up to the first floor plan. And I'll just draw uh, 
uh, region annotate. Let's just put a region in here in my first floor plan. Okay. It's got some space to it. And now let's go back over to that section or that sheet, which I said was my first floor plan. Uh, interesting. It didn't show up there. And then didn't show up there either. <laughs> so, but it's, it says that the first plan is there. So, First floor plan. Now here we are on the first floor plan. Okay, so that's where I would put my region in. It's on this sheet of the first floor plan, and now we'll go to the section, and there it is. So it's loaded. I'm sorry, we go to the sheet. So there it is, it's loaded in. So I like, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the work that it takes to create your sheets and your filters uh, are already there. So that's uh, making a template and the advantage of it.